robbery or a runner. Now, these are the two terms I've been seeing getting thrown around on social media after last night's fight between Teofimo Lopez and Jermaine Ortiz. And before I go into my analysis on the specifics of last night, I do think it's essential to address some overarching themes that are a key reason for why it turned out the way it did last night. And if you stick around till the end of the video, I'll give you my assessment and how I scored the fight. Fortunately, I have to use stills for the YouTube video, but if you head over to my Patreon, you can get a version with video footage alongside other exclusive content. So I'll leave that in the description below. So first up, styles make fights. And once again, the matchmaking at top rank have left Teofimo Lopez facing a stylistic challenge that didn't play to his strengths. And we obviously saw that against the likes of Sandor Martin, which was a very similar fight. And the Ortiz camp clearly looked at that and thought they could exploit Teo in this one. And for me, I've always said this, Teofimo Lopez is a natural counterpuncher. And he's best when guys are coming towards him. I've said this for years if you guys have been following me for a while. And for me, there was no surprise that he was going to struggle against Ortiz at moments in this fight, especially as a guy who likes to fight in the back foot for the most part. The second point I want to make is that people are saying Ortiz wasn't throwing anything. Now, sure, he could have thrown a little bit more on the back foot, but he actually threw more punches than Tio in the end. And if anything, I feel like Tia Fimo should have been using his jab a lot more, doubling up to help push him back so he could land his right hand. He would just continually walk him down, not really throwing anything at all. So I don't get where this myth of Ortiz wasn't throwing when Tio wasn't throwing that much himself. He was just looking to land one big punch. Now the third point I want to make is that Lopez must reassess his approach, particularly against mobile southpaws. And this is clearly an issue. We've seen it with Martin. We saw it in moments in the fight versus Taylor and even Lomachenko and his inability to cut off the ring and adapt to different styles could prove costly against elite competition, especially when he's calling guys out like Terence Crawford. Do you really believe he could defeat someone like Devin Haney or a Terence Crawford forming like that? And I don't want to completely shit on the guy. I actually find Lopez very entertaining to watch. He brings a bit of an excitement. I don't really like his character as a whole, but he's something different and the sport needs that at times. And he simply needs to learn how to cut off the ring or stick to his strengths and be the counter puncher. Otherwise, people are simply not going to watch his fights. And now that my kind of opinion and rant is over, I guess let's dissect the fight itself. In round one, Ortiz immediately established himself as a southpaw. Nothing we haven't seen before. He is known to switch stances at times. And it was evident that Lopez was going to play the aggressor in this fight. And despite facing previous southpaw opponents, Lopez really struggled to assert his dominance. He just opted to walk down his opponent, not really thinking about closing off the routes of escape for Ortiz. Instead, just looking to kind of walk him down and look for one big punch. And going into round two, Lopez found himself chasing Ortiz around the ring and occasionally getting caught by Ortiz's quick combinations and just due to his inability to cut off angles effectively and it was just easy for Ortiz at that point. But going into round three, it was just the same again and he found little success breaking through his defense and occasionally getting countered coming in or he'd plant his feet allowing Ortiz to pull off a quick combination. Going into round four, we saw glimpses of improvement from Lopez and he utilized different defensive strategies and the landing an effective right hand to the body with a left hook up top. And for me, it's clear Tio was clearly wanting a fight at this point and Ortiz was wanting to box. Naively from Tio, he called in Ortiz to the corner, pulling off a Lomachenko, only for Ortiz to actually catch Tio when he was in that position. And him just doing this himself, it's clear it was just a sign of frustration that he couldn't figure out how to close the distance without getting countered or land a shot himself. We'd do the same thing again in round six, and he would actually get caught again as he called in Ortiz into that position. Going into round seven was another better round from Teofimo, and Ortiz was clearly still frustrating Teo in some aspects, but Teo was getting more success. Maybe it was just the, the pressure of consistently walking him down. And unfortunately, in typical fashion, there was an accidental head clash, which caused a cut on Ortiz's head. And maybe he was a little bit shaken up with Teo actually landing some shots towards the end of that round. And you kind of maybe felt that this was Teofimo's chance to really shift the momentum in his favour. And that's what kind of happened. You know, Tiafimo was 
being far more aggressive walking down Ortiz. However, Ortiz, and this happened throughout the whole fight, was just able to escape out to his right as the southpaw. And just like I said, Tiafimo wasn't cutting off that escape for him. And it was just easy work for Ortiz. He just had to move out to his right, pivot out to his right, and move back to the center of the ring with Tiafimo once again chasing him down, trying to land one big shot. And every now and again, Tio would just stand his ground, kind of looking at Ortiz and get caught by another quick combination or check hook. And at one point, I think it was round nine, I was watching the ESPN coverage and Bradley, you know, and I do actually think he makes some really good points sometimes, but he was just saying at one point about how Teal coming forward dictates the pace of the fight. Now, in a way, I do agree with that. That is an aspect, but you have to throw something behind it. And personally, for me, that's just not enough. If you look at the Haney versus Regis Progre fight, for example, Regis Progre was constantly moving forward, throwing punches, with Devin Haney pretty much using the same tactics Jermaine Ortiz used. With mainly the only difference being that he actually managed to hurt Regis Progre and probably connect a lot more. However, was it because Jermaine Ortiz isn't the known face in Vegas? You know, Lopez has been around that circuit for a while, and in no way I'm saying there's corruption in there, it just seems a, a bit odd to me, especially when you consider the final scorecard, which I'll touch on at the end. And for me, the last three rounds, I had it for Ortiz. I think he won them pretty clearly. I think he just boxed in the back foot. Pretty simple stuff. Moved to his right, caught uh, Lopez with counters as he came in. Tio landed one or two punches, but Ortiz would come back with a counter himself. And he would just control the space with the jab between him and Tio. As Tio was just coming forward looking for that one punch. And of course, like I mentioned before, if Tiafimo wasn't getting where he wanted, he would sometimes plant his feet, giving Ortiz the chance to land on him. And for me, this pattern just persisted in those final rounds. And for me, Lopez's sporadic moments of aggression were outweighed by Ortiz's consistent performance throughout the whole fight. And I actually scored the fight 116-112 to him. Now, were there some close rounds in there? Of course there was. I can totally understand maybe the 115-113 card, potentially. Personally, I felt Ortiz boxed the fight he had to do to win this fight, whereas if Tiafimo Lopez just didn't do it for me. Sure, he was using effective aggression with his footwork walking him down, but he was still getting countered and he was still getting visibly frustrated at times. And as much as this can be considered as effective aggression, in the eyes of the judges, you just need to be throwing more behind it. And I just felt Ortiz did the better job in this fight. I guess in conclusion, I guess the fight showcased the importance of adapting to different styles. It highlights the challenges Lopez faces in the future against elusive opponents. And unless Lopez addresses these weaknesses, future matchups against elite competition could prove pretty daunting. Forget talking about someone like Terence Crawford. He needs to go back to being the counter puncher or he simply needs to learn how to cut off the ring a lot better. But yeah guys, that 117-111 scorecard is just shocking in my opinion. But yeah guys, in my opinion, I feel Ortiz definitely won this fight. I think he was unlucky not to get the nod, even get a draw, considering the output was quite low from both guys. And I really feel Teofimo has got another lucky golden ticket again for this one. Now, I hope this is a lesson for Tio. Hopefully, he can come back again. As, like I said at the start of this video, you know, he can be an entertaining fighter. He provides something different for us as fight fans. But either the guys at top rank, their matchmaking team, need to do better. I think a fight with Mateus would be fantastic for Tio. It would allow him to use his counterpunching skill set rather than facing someone like Devin Haney, who I think would absolutely outbox him completely. But yeah, guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. How did you guys have it? I'd love to know. And what next for Tiafimo Lopez and Jermaine Ortiz? Who would you like to see them go on to fight next? Do you think a rematch could happen? I don't think many people would want to watch it again. But on that note, this has been Jamie from Boxing Life. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.